They said she was born a crone, an abomination forged from leftovers that nature would not claim, spat out as a bastard child in a damp cave by the river Nid, as the very moon shunned her. They said her stench was so rotten that she walked on a cloud of flies. They said that she turned water into stone. They said these things and much more. And yet they went in droves down to the petrifying well to see ugly old Mother Shipton. They all came, hoping to influence their fates, since the woman who defied the very laws of nature could also see what the future had to hold, and so enable them to take corrective or aversive measures. Yet the powers of this sorceress were incompletely revealed, for she was also the guardian of a technology that could match the potency of nature. Yet not all the things that they said about Mother Shipton were untrue. Today, her miraculous technology lies unclaimed, lurking in full view as a tourist attraction. While the Enlightenment gave us new sets of tools that replaced our oracles and used the powers of science to enable different approaches and, and ways of making predictions, even these had their limits, being less reliable as time passed or as events became increasingly complex. Indeed, even in our highly technologized area, our ancient times are stirred when our current tool sets cannot clearly see the future. We have recently come to regard these limits as singularities, where technologically mediated events introduce time and complexity into our reality so rapidly that they render our predictive methods ineffective. Indeed, it is said that they threaten to rupture the fabric of human history. They include a range of anticipated incidents, such as the AI singularity, where machine intelligence exceeds that of humans, the transhuman singularity, where our bodies are no longer naturally made, the virtual singularity, where we upload our identities, and even the escape velocity singularity, where human lifespans increase so dramatically they disrupt our current notions of humanity. But although these singularities may seem diverse, they stem from a particular kind of thinking, which originates from that Enlightenment worldview. This is set to hard control the future and involves accurately forecasting events so that we can better deal with, design, or prevent them from happening. Yet the inability to know exactly what happens next does not imply Faustian bargains to evade grey goose scenarios, as Bill Joy may claim, but anticipates disruption in our experience of reality through GPS, scientific instruments, and the data processing powers of modern computing, a complex model of the world has emerged and has increased our awareness of existential risks to our human culture. They indicate that we face great changes that are posed by nature herself. Over the course of this century, we are likely to witness more flooding, dramatic weather patterns, and resource shortages, which will reach tipping points where systems behave unpredictably and which we are currently powerless to describe or prevent. Nature does not obey the linear laws of machines, but operates in complex, contextualized, and irreversible ways which exist beyond the singularity, in places that we cannot see clearly. We may think of these conceptual opacities as the black sky, for which we need a different tool set. And this is black sky thinking. Black sky thinking is tactical, propositional, and iterative. It draws existing threads of experience together and weaves a loose reality fabric from them. It then repeats the process until we can start to see the world around us again clearly and bump confidently up against its warp and weft under new blue skies. I'd like to talk about a particular singularity to offer an example of black sky thinking, the interstellar singularity, which occurs when humans leave the solar system. Our journey to the stars may be happening sooner than you think. Right now, Icarus Interstellar are catalyzing the construction of a world ship in Earth's orbit within 100 years. I am project leader for Persephone, which is one of the projects of Icarus Interstellar and responsible for the living interior to this world ship. 
This may be thought of as a unique kind of nature that supports its spacefaring inhabitants. But since this project will be realized in more than one lifetime, and also exists within an age of exponential technological change, it is difficult, if not impossible, to see how we can even begin to imagine how we might deploy the necessary technologies to construct the living fabric for a worldship that does not already exist. Persephone inhabits black sky thinking territory. My work addresses the unknown challenges of building a living and environment for this worldship by harnessing the computational properties of matter powered by subatomic networks, chemical relationships, and flows of energy. These take place in parallel and operate in real time, so we can think of the natural world as a kind of technology itself and harness its potential using the techniques of natural computing, a term that was inspired by Alan Turing's interest in the computational powers of nature and provides us with an alternative technological platform to machines, which helps us map and shape continually unfolding solution spaces. The outputs of this approach propose a new kind of nature with its own unique laws, based in physics and chemistry of the systems that underpin the world ship. So rather than extrapolating the consequences of conceptual models, black sky thinking literally feels its way around possibilities by mapping and working the nature of reality without having to know the future. And Persephone will shape her world by horizontally coupling her native physical and chemical systems together through her soils, which function as a highly complex, self-producing natural computer. My research explores natural computing systems, such as chemistries that are lively and resist the de decay towards equilibrium, to grow structures like chemical worms and banded soil-like substrates. Indeed, nature's technologies are unlike those of machines. They are not made from a world of geometrically bound objects, but are born from a dynamic field of possibility that is based on networks, relationships, and flows. Such technologies are so familiar to us that we take them for granted, as they already exist beneath our feet. Indeed, these soils are the foundation of all civilizations. They occur spontaneously, acting as chemical transformers, whose effects can be expressed in terms of land fertility. Soil technology may help us feel our way around a new kind of reality, not by consuming resources, but by endlessly transforming matter in complex entanglements of flow and metabolism that result in fundamentally life-promoting events, ones that we can shape. The story of Mother Shipton directly speaks to my work, not because of her conceptually forged bold prophecies that spoke of times when men could walk and communicate underwater, or even when women would wear trousers to straddle transport systems as if astride a broomstick. However, I am drawn to the legend of a woman who embodies a complete deconstruction of our aestheticized views of nature, which Timothy Morton and Slavoj Žižek declare get in the way of dealing with the materiality of the actual world we inhabit through our preconceptions. But I am most compelled by Mother Shipton's legend because of the very place that she lived, as it harbored an architectural scale computer. Mother Shipton's petrifying well was a place where soft objects were turned to stone. This has nothing to do with the anti-natural tendencies of a profane woman, but may be attributed to the synthetic properties of elemental infrastructures, nor are the features of the well simply a natural phenomenon untouched by humans. They are carefully orchestrated by the drivers of our material reality based in physics and chemistry, operating in conjunction with people who came to ritualistically place soft objects in the mineral-rich waters. Here the transformation begins. The soft object becomes saturated with water, which flows through the porous matrices by capillary action. And as the water evaporates from these permeable bodies, it leaves limestone-like deposits behind, like kettle scale. The mouth of the well drips stone objects from its damp matrix, which are hung by threads that suspend the soft bodies between the ground and the air, where they await to be transformed into something more lasting, that enfolds sacrificial items like teddy bears, lobsters, brushes, and even John Wayne's hat into the fabrics of the rocks. These processes 
as magical as and unconventional as they may seem, exist today and embody a rudimentary framework for a natural computer. In its current form, these may be considered as a stone spinning web, which can act as a primordial prototype to harness what David Glisson calls pre-natural forces, and offers us a glimpse of a world and an emerging technological field. Such technologies may not only be developed through our increasing knowledge of chemistry, physics, and biology, but may also be evolved into more sophisticated computational matrices that function as artificial soils and may eventually bring world ships to life or help us invent new forms of construction, repair, and recycling for our increasingly resource-constrained cities. So, these unnatural forms, hag and worldship, share something in common with all living things, in that they defy the very odds of their existence. Yet they do not survive by submitting to the random lottery of evolution, but are post-natural hybrids that manipulate the fabric of reality by drawing its material threads together and shaping it through their own force and will as in incessant acts of survival and growth. Using the technology of natural computing, these post-natural bodies spin firm fabrics out of elemental cycles and grow new worlds from the very guts of nature and make claim to an existence that they do not assume as a given. In full view, the drip, drip, dripping of the Mother Shipton stone web permeates and transforms the soft bodies carefully placed in its immortal well. Sometimes it spins this way, and at other times it twists that way. From time to time, strange and unexpected nodules bulge expectantly, and in those prodigious moments that precede a decision, it seems that life itself may split the sack and all is possible. Thank you.